What's up, everybody? Welcome back to episode two of Just the Basics. I'm so glad you guys decided to stick around and learn Adobe Premiere with me. And if you're tuning in for the first time, I just have one thing to say to you. What's up? So without any more waiting, let's roll that intro and get started with Adobe Premiere. All right, guys, so today I'm going to teach you how to start getting around Premiere by being able to read the layouts, how to set your own custom workspace, and being able to find exactly where everything is that you need to get started making your videos. Okay, so when you fire Premiere, this is going to be your home screen. This is where you can start a new project, open old projects, and down here in the center, you'll see previous projects that you've opened up before. We're going to start by clicking New Project. Right here, you'll be able to name your project. We're going to call this one Episode 2. You click browse here. This is where you can choose where you want your project to go. I'm going to go to desktop. Let's see, where did I put it? Editing tutorials, Premiere 2020, episode two. Select. All right, this is very important. This button right here, scratch disk. General, you can kind of ignore this. You're not really going to change as much. And in just settings, you're probably going to keep that the same. Scratch disks is where it's super important. You want to make sure that all of these say same as project. This makes sure that all of your Adobe Premiere saves are going to be in the same location as your project. So that way if something happens, if you lose files or if it crashes, this is just a good way to keep things organized. All right, so when you open up Premiere, this is the basic layout that you're gonna look at. Over on this bottom section here, we have our timeline. This is where all of your clips are going to go and your effects, your text, color correction, all that stuff. Over here, this is going to be your project panel. This is where all of your footage and stuff is going to go before it goes into the timeline. And here's your program sequence. When you're viewing footage or on your timeline, this is where you're gonna see everything. All right, so you're gonna drag and drop your footage here. This is what it's gonna look like. You're gonna take that, drag it into your timeline, and then boom, we've got everything. Look at that handsome face. That's a good looking boy. Okay, so getting into a little bit more detail here, on this left side, this is the list view of how you're gonna look at everything. You can create folders for, let's say, footage. That way you can keep things nice and organized. You can create a new one for your sequence. Drop that in there. But you don't have to look at it this way. If you come down here to the bottom left, you have what's called an icon view, which gives you more of a picture style if you wanna be able to scrub through it beforehand. You can also do what is called a freeform view. Freeform is a way for you to kind of lay out your footage in a way that kind of fits your vision. So let's say you're filming outside in a video and you do things out of order. You don't film, you know, from the first scene to the last scene. You start with the third scene and then you jump to seven, then four, then, you know, that kind of thing. When you import it here in Premiere, you can take those and you can line them up how they're actually going to be in your video. It's kind of confusing for me. I prefer list view. It just keeps things nice and organized for myself. Right, so that's, that's just kind of what I'm going to go with here. All right, coming over here to the middle section where it says program. This is what your timeline is going to be. So everything you put into your timeline when you view it is going to be in your program. However, when you double click on footage here in your, your project panel, it's going to be into your source monitor. This is what your actual clips are going to be before you toss them into your timeline. All right, moving on here to the bottom, this is going to be your timeline. You can expand sections of it. Uh, the bottom section here is going to be all for audio. Top section here is going to be for everything else. That includes video, text, graphics, color correction. Everything that isn't audio is going to go up here in these layers. Another thing here, this is going to be your time code. This is, you know, of course, how long your video is and where you are inside of it. So over here in your audio section, you can record new lines of audio. You can, of course, move things to different layers, depending on if you want stuff to be on top or below. You can mute tracks as well, and you can even lock them to prevent you from editing them any further. The same thing goes when you are editing your video. You can move tracks up and down so you can layer things however you like it. You can hide them instead of muting them. This makes the layer invisible, so that way it doesn't affect the rest of the timeline, but you don't have to delete it. And then, of course, you can lock it down to keep you from editing it whatsoever. Okay, going up. Actually, no, let's stay down here in the project panel for a little bit. 
over here on your left, this is going to be your toolbar. I'm going to go over these in a later video, so don't worry about those right now. Remember, these are small little bit of chunks of information. Over here on the right, this is going to be your sound bar. This lets you know, of course, how loud something is. In order to keep up and create better content. So this right here, this is going to be your playback resolution. This is super helpful if you're working with high quality footage like 4K or 8K and your computer can't quite handle watching it in its full resolution in Adobe Premiere. Uh, depending on your processing power, it may get a little bit choppy and that really slows down your workflow. So what you're going to do is you're going to bring it down to a half or maybe a fourth. And so when you're scrubbing through footage and working in it, you see how pixelated that is? It looks bad there, but the footage is still the 4K or 8K that you're using. It's just dumbing it down for your computer to be able to watch it so you can continue editing. This little wrench here, this is going to give you some different tools that you can use in Adobe Premiere. Uh, one of the ones that you could probably use the most is probably rulers and let's do guides. This allows you to kind of lay things out if you're trying to get things centered, you want text in your upper or lower thirds, this is a good way to help you do that. And then of course if you want them gone, just go back in there and uncheck them. Simple as that, right? Moving on. Moving back over here to the left, you'll see here that there are different windows that do different things. These are going to be where you're going to find all of the ways to edit your footage in Adobe Premiere. The big two you need to know about are effects controls and effects. So if I click on a clip here and let's say I want to scale it up and move its position around, I'll go to effects controls and from here you can do just that. You move things around, up and down, you can scale it, you can do rotation. This is a good way to do basic effects. And of course, when you go to the effects tab, again, it's not exactly After Effects, so you can only do certain things. You can have basic transitions and the utmost basic effects. And we're talking light green screening and distorting of certain kinds of videos. That's about it. That's all you're gonna get here. But you can do other things. If you go to Window, all these things here, these can be new windows that you can use. If you need to know the history of, you know, all the moves that you're making, you can do that here. Let's find some other ones. Uh, let's go to Lumetri Color. Here's a pretty important one. All right, so you click on these arrows and it'll show you all the windows that you have. Let's go to Lumetri Color. This is where you're going to do the basic color corrections for vlogs and stuff like that. All right, let's increase the size of this video here. So with Lumetri Color, you have some pretty decent amount of tools here. You can change the color temperature of the video. You can change exposure, contrast, highlight, shadows, all that kind of fun stuff. Reset, you can even do saturation. And if you want to go deeper into it, you can. They have these options down here. You can go into creative. You can add LUTs if you want to. You can change curves, all kinds of fun things. You can even do HLS secondary. I'll probably go into a deeper tutorial about color correction later. Right now, I just wanted to show you where everything is so that way in later tutorials, you're not trying to keep up. Okay, so back up here in the top, you'll see that there are a bunch of workspaces and even one with my name on it. If we start over here at the left, this is going to be the learning one where you can follow along with basic Adobe Premiere tutorials that Adobe itself has created for you. You have ones called assembly and editing, and these are just kind of the basic ways that you can move things around. If we go to color, you have things like Lumetri scopes, you have all the cool creative options here for color correction. And then of course you have effects and audio and graphics. But if none of these are quite to your liking, you want something a little bit custom, you can create your own workspace. So you simply just open up all the things you want to have on there. And if you click and drag, you see these highlighted areas? These are all the places that you can toss things in Premiere to create your own custom workspace. When you're ready to go, you simply go to Window in Workspaces, and when you're done, you click Save as New Workspace, and then you name it. And if at any time you edit your workspace and you decide you want to go back to how it was before, go back up to your workspace, click these three arrows, and go to Reset to Save Layout. All done. All right, guys, that's the end of episode two. Like I said, these are going to be super short and sweet. Now you know the basic layout of how Adobe Premiere is, so take a few minutes to yourself, play around with it, get your own workspace going, because in the next episode, I'm going to be going over the tools of Premiere, and then we're actually going to start editing. As always, like this video if you found it helpful, subscribe if you haven't already so you can stay up to date on new videos and new tutorials when I post them, and if you have any questions about Adobe Premiere or if you want me to do a very specific tutorial, please feel free to comment below and I will get back to you. All right, that does it. I'll see you guys next week.